Day 197 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Jozzy here, and today is another quick update as I take a down-to-earth and simplified approach to the happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I like to start off with the Russian military losses, so I'll pull those ones up here. And starting off with the uh, Russian military personnel losses, so 51,250, quite a jump from yesterday to a factor of about 600 or so. Then we jump down to the armored combat vehicle losses, which is a whopping 37. Uh, then the tanks are staggering 15, and artillery a stupendous 32. Plus a couple of aircraft, uh, well, two aircraft and two choppers as well. And now we move across to the map to take a look at a few things here. And as we sometimes do, we start outside of Ukraine in the actual Russian Federation itself in uh, Belgorod, where there was actually a, a fire at a substation. Now, it's too soon to say what this is as yet, but perhaps another smoking incident? I don't know. And then we move slightly down to the Kharkiv uh, Oblast and the Kharkiv city region all around here, uh, where Ukraine has retaken 150 square miles of territory uh, in the, the east of the Kharkiv region. Ukrainian forces likely used a tactical surprise to advance in this counter-offensive up north here, as they are likely exploiting Russian force relocations to the Kherson Oblast counter-offensive from the Ukrainian side in the south. Now, Russia has had to pull back and left a, a bunch of tanks, trucks, and ammunition behind. They had to scurry out of their unfortified positions unfortified because Russia didn't expect a decent counter-offensive here from Ukraine. And we'll start off with a photo where a Russian ammunition supply truck in Kharkiv Oblast overnight was destroyed. And we also have the U forces, so the Ukrainian forces captured a BMP-1 in Kharkiv, uh, in, the, in the general Kharkiv region there. This is one of the many things that Russia left behind. This vehicle, a uh, BMP-1, is part tank, part taxi, or part APC, so therefore a part armored personnel carrier. And yes, it was designed and built in the Soviet era, circa around, well, and around the 1960s. Then we have a bit of footage of a settlement that's been retaken back by Ukraine. So this is a, a village south of, um, Balaklia, so around here, this blue region. Um, now, they're actually taking down a red uh, Soviet flag. Now, I knew that Russia was low on equipment, but I didn't think that extended to as far as flags as well. They probably had an old uh, whole bunch of them in a warehouse uh, from the Soviet era. Let's not let them go to waste. And in or around the same region at Blacklear, uh, a photo that requires no comments is spreading around the web too. Then in the, uh, the, the same region, in fact, uh, we have uh, video footage of uh, a Russian S-300 system being taken out by the Ukrainian forces as well. So certainly a lot of action in the Kharkiv region. In fact, let's just pull up the map and see if we can see any uh, of the date map changes there, back and forward. Okay, so a bit of movements here and there. There we go. Yeah, mostly in the uh, Blacklear area there. At least that we know of so far. It is an ongoing circumstance or situation. Uh, yeah, so don't write it in stone just yet. Then we'll move down to what I call the ever contested Donbass region here where we have an explosion at the Petrivsky district in Donetsk, of which that is a little bit to the uh, south uh, west of Donetsk there. And this video shows the aftermath of a first explosion having taken place. 
Then a moment later, we have a, a Russian tank driving directly in the location of the explosion. Then a moment later, we have a new explosion that occurs. And I've just realized that by the way that I'm saying that, it's like the, the Russian tank went into, uh, went into the line of fire and then exploded. That's not necessarily true at all. It's just the way that it looked. So we've got separate units in the Donbass. So the, um, the Donbass fighters, then we've got the North and the South fighters. They're all working, not together, but quite separately, doing their own separate thing. As a result, there was a whole bunch of shelling here on the front lines, and particularly in Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, not too, too front line. But uh, yeah, the, the Russian forces were shelling, uh, given this area quite a hammering in the last 24 hour reporting period as well. Then we move a little bit further over in what I might consider central Ukraine, or at least quite west of the Donbass, is Kremachuk. Here it is. So uh, an air defense, uh, well, the Ukrainian air defenses at this location shot down a, a Russian missile here. So this really is in, in deep central Ukraine territory, at least as far as the front lines go. Perhaps they were testing the area. Maybe there was a, a strategic target there for them to take out. Um, let's just say they were testing. It's a it's an area that doesn't actually get a lot of shelling missiles, rockets from the from the Russian side. I've probably got to say at this point the 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 Russian missile weapon technologists that shoot these missiles or, or decide on these coordinates don't get a lot of press in this war. But I suspect this group of people in the military on the Russian side are, are also suffering from massive morale issues as well because they probably didn't expect that one to be shot down at that location there. And then we'll move down to the Zaporizhia region. Uh, region. We've got a bit of footage here. So uh, strike on a, a Russian checkpoint was reported here. And here's the video to go with it. A little bit long, but when you pause the video, you will actually see a, a Russian soldier with a Z symbol patch of sorts on his arm. There's been some issues with the checkpoints with uh, citizens wanting to get through, but when they do get through, they get interrogated, they get all sorts of things and they're, they're not really enjoying it. Then they get pushed back to where they came from, that is to say the Russian occupied side. So it's... Um, it looks like in this case, Ukraine has seen its moment and taken this checkpoint out. It's obviously quite the military installation, really, and, uh, and, and away they went. Then we'll move across to the Crimean Peninsula. Okay, so, and of which we actually go to Saki Air Base again. Now this footage actually came through just before I started uh, to hit the record button. Uh, so we don't have a lot of details about this just yet. Looks like those Russian air defenses weren't working in the Crimean Peninsula again, but uh, I'm, I'm sure to be following up on this video later as soon as we get some more news. Then we move across to Kherson. So the counter-offensive really been in full swing for the last few days there, where Russia has a logistics problem. They cannot really get north or south of this Dnipro River here easily at all. They, they risk their lives, and I'll show you footage shortly uh, to that effect. But um, basically, Ukraine's systematic precision targeting of vulnerable crossing points likely continues to impose pressure on Russian forces as they attempt to contain Ukrainian attacks. It slows their ability to deploy operational reserves and resupply material from the east, which is where they get it from. Now in this video, the uh, Russian forces are coming under attack on a pontoon crossing over the Dnipro River, uh, near the Novokokovka Bridge there. Now, I can't show you the whole footage because it could be seen or considered as a little bit violent, uh, but the Russian forces cannot use the adjacent bridge right next to it, of course. It's, uh, it's just been all high-marsed up. It's not usable. 
So what they've done or tried to do, uh, the Russian forces, is attempt to cross at a more narrow location right next to it. And on the map, it's right here, this location here. Although as soon as they start to cross it, the Ukrainians just were waiting to strike it and they hit them. And strike from a distance as well, with very high precision and also timing as well. The Ukrainians have this down pat. All of the pontoon, the barges, the ferries, the bridges, everything along the Dnipro River, they have just they've just got it down to a T. And we'll look a bit further up here, and there was uh, this is a photo of an explosion at uh, Snirivka right here near the what I call the mid rift section there. We'll just uh, pull up the date map and see if we can see anything on this map. Again, this is all sort of critical, secure, private information at the moment, so we can't see exactly the the movements. We do know Ukrainian forces have made quite the push further than what we can see in the middle and the top there as well, and a little bit down to the bottom. But for now, I'll say that uh, the operational command south of the Ukrainian armed forces advised that the U forces destroyed three Grad missile launchers, 15 units of armored vehicles, 10 howitzers and heavy artillery guns, two ammunition depots and killed 108 Russian troops. And that's really all at this Kherson location, really the, uh, the north bank of the Dnipro River in the Kherson Oblast. Then we'll move across to a little bit of news where the US has announced an additional $675 million uh, USD uh, to support uh, Ukraine with the weapons, which will include rounds of HIMARS, military vehicles, and other various equipment. And in some more news, um, Belarus holds military drills at the border with Ukraine and Poland, so around this area here. However, the chance of a Belarusian, like a, a Belarusian offensive into Ukraine still remains low. They may have been ordered to flex their might or flex their muscles uh, at the border by Putin, for instance, so that Ukraine would need to expend additional military forces away from the red hot front lines. So perhaps something like that's happened there. And these military drill forces from the Belarusian side will, will be ongoing for about a week, they said. And in some more news, President Zelensky of Ukraine uh, mentioned for the 2023 Ukrainian budget that uh, they'll be providing more than a trillion hryvnias uh, for security and defense. So in other words, that's about 30 billion US dollars he also went on to say that the budget would be very indicative of a wartime looking budget, <laughs> so no surprises there. And in some more news, the Ukrainian letter I, which has become a symbol of resistance to the Russian occupation throughout Ukraine, has been painted on a number of public monuments and statues in Mariupol. Uh, according to reporters in the southern city over here, right in the Donetsk Oblast to the very bottom southeast. Now, people are painting Ukrainian letters, uh, the Ukrainian letter I on the streets, irritating the occupiers. I is not present in the Russian language and is one of the symbols of Ukraine now, much like V or Z is to the, uh, the Russian side. And perhaps I'll make a snide comment here. So long as some large international company doesn't start using it for their own shameless self-plug, then things will be fine. And in some other news, amid the Kharkiv uh, Ukrainian counter-offensive in the north, Putin declared that Russia hadn't lost anything in launching a war on Ukraine during a belligerent and defiant speech at uh, the, it's like a, a Russian Eastern Economic Forum uh, in the last 24 hours. So he said, we haven't lost anything and we won't lose anything. Now, sometimes 
I talk about an increasingly isolated Putin that is so removed from the battlefield and therefore reality that in some instances he doesn't seem to know what's actually even going on, sometimes at least, but oh well. And just a funny to round off the day with, so a bit of an upbeat message from Ukraine's Ministry of Defense on Twitter this morning uh, as the counteroffensive in Kharkiv continues. Now, just for a bit of background information, uh, Drakaris is a command used by a character in Game of Thrones when uh, they want the dragon to breathe fire. So that's a bit of that there. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, hit that like button, ignore all those trolls in the comments where you can. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.